Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be episode number four of the Duramax Camaro swap, LML and 2014 Camaro, fifth gen. Last episode, we covered the intercooler and the intake system on the car. So if you haven't saw that one, go ahead and check it out, get yourself caught up. Today, we're going to go over keeping the car cool. That's going to include the transmission coolers and the radiator and all the other cool lines going to and from the engine, including the heater core lines. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, so first thing I did was tie the two coolers together. That way I could get them up into the car there and kind of mock them up and see how I was going to get the angle done. You can see here I already have the top bracket done. It bolts right around where the hood latch goes and uses factory holes there. And the bottom I'm just going to tie it forward to the intercooler mount that I made in a previous video. And that'll just keep it from flapping around in there and spaced away from the radiator and or from the condenser I should say and from the intercooler so they're not rubbing up against each other. So I just went ahead and gotten everything tacked together in the car and then I'll remove the whole bracket and fully weld it up outside here. After I was done the welding, I took the flap wheel and I cleaned up all the sharp rough edges and smoothed them out a little bit, got them ready for some paint. I used some dupli color black and gave them some clear coat after that and then they are ready to install in the car. So the top mount needs to go on first and then you take the intercooler mount off. Well, it's already off because I painted it. Uh, mount the coolers to the intercooler mount and then I took and tied them together because they're tied together in a series. Then you can slip it into the car, attach the hoses that go down to the transmission, and then you can tie the coolers to that top mount we already put on, and then the bottom mount will get reattached to the intercooler and to the two holes we used on the core support. So that blue 90 is two and a half inches off the bottom of the water pump. That small hose down there is 1.5 inches coming off the bottom of the radiator. And right up here is the heater core line that's three quarter. So all these need to tie together. So I'm thinking just a metal pipe going across, two and a half on one end, and on the other end will be a 1.5 and a three quarter bar. So I'm going to cut a piece of this two and a half inch pipe here. It's got a bit of a curve in the end, which fits pretty close. It's not quite enough of a curve, so I have another small chunk of this black stuff here that actually has a hose barb on one end, so that pipe will be able to clamp there and seal good. Together they'll make the bend we need. cleaned up I'll get these two pieces tacked together then we can put them back in the car mock it up and make sure it fits good and then I'll fully weld it up so the curb looks good but I think I want to cut this off a lot shorter and then come out with a straight smaller one and a half inch piece to join up and then do the hose barb a little bit over and come down with a smaller chunk of heater hose to connect the other two together. So I cut another chunk of that one inch, one and a half inch tubing and put a barb on the end. And then here you can see I trimmed the other piece down and kind of got it mocked together and tacked it in place. And actually this is looking pretty good. I'm happy with this. So we'll just stick a barb over there where they join. And this fits good here with the curve. And then we'll weld the whole thing up and check it for leaks. All right, oh, and so here's what I mean by add another hose barb in where they join. 
Uh, that little guy is a three quarter, so he's gonna go up to that heater hose coming off the frame rail. I gave him a bit of a kind of a kick out there, so it's pointed towards it where it needs to be. I'm gonna go ahead and tack him into place. We'll do one more mock up, and then should be able to weld it up. So I wanted to make sure that I'd weld that three-quarter bar as much around it as possible as far as I can reach in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and tap the sides in and then I'll fully weld it up and that way we're just going to leaks it all. So here's the finished product. I'm just gonna go at it with the flap wheel, get it cleaned up a little bit, make it a little bit prettier, get it ready for some paint, and then we'll give it a pressure check. And if it's all good, we'll install it on the car. Okay, this is my setup I use for testing air to air radiators. I got it set to about 20 PSI right now and I just plugged off the other ends with some plastic pipe plug fittings and clamps and all that. And just pouring water over it. I actually ended up finding one leak. I fixed it already. So just checking it the second time around here and if it checks out good, which it looks like it is, we'll get it on the, we'll paint up the one weld I did and then we'll get it on the car. All right, here we are, leak-free, painted up. Minimal runs and minimal fingerprint marks. Uh, you can't see it anyways where it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on the car. Like that. And then you can see it installed here. It actually looks pretty good. I'll get the other two ends connected. And we'll get some water in this thing. So on the top of the thermostat hosing here, there's two pipes sticking out of it, half inch heater hose. One goes to the turbo and the other one is for the, something in the emissions. I want to get one of them out of there and tap it so I can put a thermostatic switch in there for possibly for one of my cooling fans. And then the other cooling fan, I think I'm going to run off intake air temp. I'm not 100% sure yet. But I just want to have this option for later if I need to use it, if I can't get the ECM to control my factory fan relay. I ended up having to drill this thing out after hitting it with the slide hammer and chipping away at it with a flat screwdriver. But after all the fighting, I finally got the piece out of there after just drilling it and then working away at it. And the little little chunk came out and I was able to tap it with, with a quarter inch tap. And then the other one kind of sticks up a little further than I liked and that half inch holes wanted to kink over when I looped it over and down to the turbo. So I just took a hacksaw and trimmed it up. There's actually a nice little ridge on like halfway down there. So you still get the nice clamp and it won't slide off the hose once you clamp it. Next thing I need to do before the thermostats in, I'm gonna shorten up the thermostat hosing. This thermostat hosing is the factory LML hosing. I just sectioned out that big, long, tall piece and then welded the outlet back on. I'm just using a spool gun for that with some aluminum wire. And then I cleaned it up with the grinder after and it was ready to put on the car. All right, with all that stuff done, I was able to put the half inch heater hose onto that line we cut down. This is one that's gonna kind of just loop up and over and it's gonna connect to that coolant port off the side of the turbo. Then I dropped a couple new thermostats in and put on our modified factory LML hosing. Got those bolts tightened down to spec. You can see the line coming off the turbo, just kind of loops over and connects there. Then at the back here, you can see I used that LML EGR feed to go to the one side of the heater core and the other heater core come down the factory line down the frame rail and connect to the bottom pipe. All right, so it took me some serious digging online and Daco's website, but I was able to find this hose that is almost the perfect fit just the way it is, except for it's got this extra little 45 kick on the end. So I'm just gonna mark it here. We're gonna trim off this extra little bend 
and the hose should fit just like it's meant for it. Hose number is a 20910. I think it's about 14 inches center to center with a 90 on each end facing opposite ways. One and a half on one end, two inch on the other end. Exactly what we need. All right, so we ended up getting, I got a leak here. And from what I can tell, it's this back pipe that's coming off that uh, rear engine cover. And if you kind of wiggle it, it's actually kind of loose. Just the way that tab holds it in there. It's not a very strong tab. It's not meant to keep it straight. It's meant to be bolted in another spot. But I think I got a solution for that. I'm gonna pull it back apart, check the O-ring out, put a new O-ring on it. And then we'll do a little modification to this pipe to hold it straight and keep it steady in there so it won't leak again. Okay, so here's that pipe. And you can see it just kind of has a small little tab on the end. So remember if I had a tab here, then that would hold it straight. So what I want to do is just make a little triangle piece and kind of gusset that tab. So that'll help hold it straight so it's not wobbling around in there. Even if this did seal like this, it probably would vibrate enough that it would eventually crack one of these small weld. You can see it's not welded very good from factory. That's all it needs, but. So I'm gonna gusset it just on the one side so I can still access the bolt. It goes in like this, so we'll gusset the side towards me because uh, we reach around the back to put the bolt in. And that should fix it up and get rid of our leak. There it is, the tab welded on. So that'll help keep it from flexing. You know, keep that tab from flexing when I bolt it in. Okay, so that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. And be sure to click the subscribe and like and all that kind of junk if you want. Next episode, we're going to go over the fuel system on the car. That'll be the fuel supply and return system. And then we're going to be getting pretty close to firing the car up. So that'll be probably by episode five, we'll be having it running. So again, thanks for watching. We'll catch you later. with the jerry can jacob you got a bunch of wires connected here you're really helping eh think it'll start with your wires connected no, I'm, I'm making this into this. oh the tractor sure okay watch out
Don't, just don't touch anything. Tack. Throttle. Sweet.